always trying to make others happy. Maybe you feel guilty for saying no to things. Well, leadership coach Kendra Reddy joins us with why it's not such a great thing to be a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. You think, oh, well, why wouldn't you want to make people happy? Yeah. So it it turns out that people pleasing actually has nothing to do with an authentic desire to want to make other people happy. So when you Google people pleaser, this was a surprise to me mm -hmm. because I never would have considered myself this. When you Google people pleaser, you see things like uh, low self-esteem, uh, doesn't want to be a burden, has trouble saying no, can't handle conflict, and it paints it like it's a personality type, which isn't true. People pleasing is actually an unconscious, subtle uh, mindset that has, again, nothing to do with wanting to make people happy. So in my experience, the people pleasers I know are the exact opposite of that archetype that you find online. Oh, okay. They're high functioning, capable, resourceful. People usually call them um, indispensable. And those qualities are really fantastic, but we also live in a hustle culture. And so our tendency unconsciously is to overextend ourselves, hoping that people will appreciate us more, but it actually just makes them value us less. So it ends up being a race to the bottom. Okay, so it's kind of like you don't want to ruffle any feathers, you don't want to upset anybody, you want stuff to get done. Oh, I'll, I'll just do it myself. We think we're making right? things easier, right? Yeah. We're going to smooth things over. Um, but it, again, it just erodes. Uh, we, first of all, we self-abandon when we do that. And then it, er, it erodes, it erodes everything. So we sort of apologize ourselves right out of the room. Okay, explain self-abandon. Self-abandon. So, um, when we go into that uh, unconscious, I'm just going to follow this urge, right? So I have this urge to speak up or hold back or apologize or harmonize. We do, a, a people pleasers do a lot of the sort of emotional lab, labor for people. Mm -hmm. When you start to notice yourself doing that, then you can ask yourself, where are these urges coming from? And who's profiting from me following them blindly? And the other thing I think we hear a lot in mainstream uh, media is like, don't be a people pleaser, set boundaries and prioritize yourself and take up space. Mm -hmm. Those things are wonderful and I agree with that advice, but if it were that easy, everyone would be doing it. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so how do you kind of recognize that that could be you doing the people pleasing? Yeah, great question. So I think if you're feeling at all resentful, burned out, if you catch yourself over delivering, over giving, under charging, uh, um, smoothing things over in the room a lot, uh, managing, anticipating people's needs, managing all of that, those are key signs that you too <laughs> might be a people pleaser. Okay, yeah. and then and then how do you, like is it little bites of like, no, I'm not going to do that. Or mm -hmm. maybe, look, I was about to pick that up, but I'm not gonna know. Yeah, so again, because it's so um, invasive and it's so unconscious, the first step really is starting to notice those urges. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing I'd say, back to this advice, this mainstream advice, and, and I'm, I'm writing about this in a book right now, around setting boundaries and prioritizing yourself. That's, those are brave acts and they require strength. So my first uh, biggest piece of advice is just go slower and smaller than you think you should. Work on building your courage and your confidence and your strength. And by noticing those urges, you start to sharpen your muscle of discernment and it becomes a little bit easier to tell, hmm, is that mine or is that yours? Okay. And you create this internal guidance system and that's where you get the courage to actually set the boundaries and take up space and so instead of self-abandoning you 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 have that again that muscle of discernment so you're able to stay with yourself instead of getting caught up in oh no I don't want anything to go wrong right right we got about a minute left but apologizing yeah. is a bad thing as well yes we as Canadians and then especially as women we will sorry ourselves right out of the room <laughs> if we can and I think again it's something that's really unconsciously programmed into us and if we use it too often we the sorry loses all its value and so I'd say remember when you have that urge to apologize you have to really catch yourself and remind yourself I'm not here to be obedient and small and make everything easy for everyone else I'm here to have a creative experience with life. Okay. I'm not going to say I'm sorry then that we've run out of time, but we have. Yeah, we have yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll get all your links up on our website. Great, Some you. excellent advice today up on uh, chch.com slash morning live. Thanks very much for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me.